All right, it's getting ready for uh, back to school time here. And I know in some states, people have gone back to school already. So what I've done here at my school, uh, I'm in charge of our new teacher orientation. Got a quick, simple five, 10 minute <clears throat> little PowerPoint on how to prepare yourself for the upcoming school year if you are a new teacher. New teacher survival guide, some quick, simple little things that can help you get your year started off right. Tricks of the trade. Number one, we all want to look like this teacher down here, the happy elementary school teacher, not the stressed, frazzled, modern school teacher trying to do everything and trying to be, you know, Superman or Superwoman. It's just not possible. So at the beginning of the year, you know, teaching is a human interactive um, profession. So as fast as you can, whether you got to use, you know, mnemonics or other devices, you want to learn your students' names. You know, people will respond much better if you call them by their name than by like, oh, excuse me, you know, um, I forgot. It's going to take time, I get it, but try and do that as fast as possible. Number two is kind of the cliche with some of the, you know, the modern, you know, the teacher that dances and shakes everybody's hand. But greet your students, either in the hallway, in between classes, or as class gets started, good morning, good afternoon, everybody, hey, what's going on, what's happening today. You know, it, it, you know, it can't be all beating over the head business. Greet them. Let them know that you care about them, um, that you're interested in some of the things that they are doing. Um, you know, whether it's school related or whether it's an extracurricular activity or a job or something like that. Like find out, you know, if you're a high school teacher, if your students have jobs. I try to patronize those um, businesses. Um, uh, next, um, look over your accommodations. 504s, IEPs, it's federal law, it's necessary. Try and get ahead of the game. Come in prepared. So if a student is nervous or shy, they don't have to ask for it. You already have it. Kind of know some of the pitfalls or some of the things that you are going to be asked to do to help take care of that student's um, accommodations. If you're not sure, find your special um, services coordinator or a veteran teacher and go over it with them. Next thing, have a syllabus. When your students come into the room, it doesn't have to be like this gigantic, you know, enormous, you know, timeline of what you're going to do throughout the year, every unit, every period of the day, but just have a syllabus. This is what we are going to cover. This is how we are going to cover it. These are how some different things are weighted. Um, be prepared. Let them know what is expected of them. And then follow your syllabus. Your rules, the way you operate, some of the things that you are going to do. Simply keep people informed. The more informed your students and your parents are, the better it's going to be for you um, throughout the year. Sorry guys, my uh, tripod was a little tilted there. Hopefully that, well, I probably didn't fix it, but that's okay. All right, next thing, set consistent and fair rules that are simple. You don't want to have a litany of 800 different little rules. These are the things that are expected. This is how we are going to treat each other. This is how I'm going to treat you and how I need you to treat me. That is a must. You know, whether you have a different bathroom policy or a cell phone policy, simple and fair, all right? You, you're, you're in class to work, you're in class to learn, you don't have a long time to waste, you know, uh, minutes, you know, making up and cowboying rules all the time. Simple and quick. And on top of that, enforce them fairly. All right, you can't, if you tell one student to, you know, if they're on their cell phone, to put it up on your front table, and a couple minutes later someone else is doing it, and you say, oh, just go ahead and put it in your pocket, you can't do that. Right? What you do for one, you must do for them all. All right. I've had my own children in class, and so sometimes you gotta you gotta drop the hammer, um, even if it's in a weird case. Um, 
Uh, you know, you have your, your student, my daughter's never got in trouble in my class at least, but anyway, you, you get what I'm saying. You must be fair and consistent no matter who it is, time of day, tardiness, you know, whatever it is. Enforce it consistently and fairly. Have a new teacher kit. Uh, you know, we're in here for a long period each and every day. You got to have some things that are going to help you out. You get a headache, have some aspirin. Get some cough drops, maybe some, you know, chewing gum. Um, have Pepto-Bismol or antacid. You know, Kleenex, you know, Lysol wipes, hand sanitizer. Just little things that can help you um, stay healthy or feeling okay while you're on the job and help your students um, as well. Um, get that before the year starts. And the room is very important. You got to create your own space. All right. It's almost like you spend more time here than you do in your own home. So my room, I have a pretty big room. Positive to that, I have a big room. The negative to that is it's filled with students every day. I run about 225 to 240 students through my classroom every year. So I break it up into quadrants. I don't like to stand still very much, so I'm always moving. So in my room, um, my layout, I've got eight desks here, I've got eight desks there, um, nine over here, and ten over here. They're broken up into quadrants, so I can move fluidly, you know, down the aisles, moving to whoever needs help or who has a question. And if we're doing a debate or a group activity, the students can quickly and freely move in between the little quadrants. Room setup is necessary. It's very important. What you don't want is the old straight vertical rows, six, seven, eight deep, so the kids in the back can fall asleep and not pay attention, and you're only really teaching the kids in the first two rows. Have a plan. Set up your classroom. It also helps your management, all right? If anybody is acting up, they're only two or three steps from, from where I am. I also have a couple garbage cans, one there, one in the back, one over here. Students need to throw away things. Um, like at my high school, um, students are constantly grazing because they're so busy. So they eat a lot of, you know, little, uh, you know, goldfish and, you know, crackers and just little things. Well, you don't want it sitting on their desk, but you don't want somebody to get up and interrupt what you're doing, so put it in the back. That way it's unobtrusive. Someone has to blow their nose. Make it easy for them to get to the garbage cans and also to get into and out of the classroom quickly and efficiently. Think about whatever is comfortable for you, get some feng shui on it, and really make it your own. Also, we know that students are always popping out their phones. No one has like a watch anymore because it's like dinosaur technology. So get a clock that's clearly visible. You know, we only have these students for an hour, if you're unfortunately in one of the block schools, for an hour and a half. So you've got to maximize your, you know, maximize your time doing this, you know, uh, constantly. It's not only distracting, but it takes time from learning. So get a clock. Let students know, um, you know, how much time they have in class. And it's also a good gauge for you, so you know how your lesson is going. Um, what's going on? All you got to do is glance. I have a clock over there and a clock behind me. Um, that's for the students. That's for me to keep an eye on how the lesson is going. Decorate your room. Right? You're here a lot. Make it your own. You can have some personal things. Like I got you know, pictures of, of my family and some educational um, opportunities that I've worked on. But you can say I also have my maps and my posters and my pictures so when the students come in, they know that history is important. History is all around them, and it's not just boring, you know, cinder block walls. So decorate your room, personalize a little bit, and have some uh, educational things in there. But critically think about your room setup. A little bit of planning will keep you from being this poor teacher with their hair flying out, stressed to the max. Um, teachers, boy, we like to just suck it up and just, you know, just keep grinding. Especially if you are a brand new teacher, learn to ask for help. This is a people business. As teachers, our job is to help people learn. Excuse me. So if you need something, 
All you have to do is ask. People aren't going to say no, most likely, unless you have an old, bitter, curmudgeonly teacher, as long as the request is reasonable. How do I do this? Can you help me with that? People are going to help you, but sometimes you need to be proactive. You need to ask. It's like your students in classroom. I say, UPS lost my crystal ball. I'm not clairvoyant. I'm not Professor Trelawney at Hogwarts. If you need something, let me know. But if I don't know, you know, I, I'm not going to guess. Um, learn how to say no. Students and schools love to take advantage of the new teacher. Do you want to sponsor this club? Do you want to be part of the Model UN or the debate team? Or do you want to help um, with porch? Do you want to coach um, uh, basketball? Do you want to do ladies field hockey? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? Do you want to be on this committee? Do you want to be on that committee? And you feel bad because you don't want to upset anybody and you're afraid to make somebody mad so you lose your job so you say yes to everything and you're pulled in 800 different directions. You simply can't do everything. Especially in the first couple years you need to learn how to say no. Your job is to be a teacher. Hone that craft. Perfect that craft. Pick maybe one thing at a time. It's always good to be involved in the school community, but you simply can't do everything. So be very conscious and don't be afraid to say no. Also, we all know it's much easier to be here sick than it is to get a sub. You know, you, you lose the day to the sub, even if you have a great sub, and then they're trying to put the pieces back together when you come back. So, oh man, if I can just make it to Friday, I'll take the day off and I'll have a three-day weekend. You get sick days, all right? We are in giant human petri dishes. So if you're not feeling good, um, you've got the fever, the flu, stay home, take your sick days. As long as you don't take a bunch of them, Nobody is going to question you. You need to be healthy for your students. So the quicker you can get healthy, the better. So don't be afraid to take your sick days and rest up if you need to. Um, the other thing, and this is so important, learn your key players at school. Who is going to be able to help you out in a crunch? The principal's administrative assistant, great person to know. The IT person, we know that they are so, their time is such at a premium. Get to know them, be friendly with them. Your head custodian, maybe your cleaning people. I treat them as if they are part of the faculty. We've had uh, our two custodians, you know, first I've known them for like, you know, you know, over 20 years. They are great people. They are going to help you out and look after you if something goes wrong. I can't tell you how many times an IT person, principal, secretary, custodian has bailed me out and vice versa when you need it. So learn who the key players are, who's going to be able to help you in a crunch, and always be thankful and don't be, a pay, be afraid to repay a favor. Um, especially if you're new, your parents, you're under a microscope, your parents are going to want to know who you are. Are you a new teacher to the building with um, teaching experience as a veteran? Or are you a young 21, 22 year old person out of you know, college or grad school? Well, you are under a microscope. So send a greeting, you know. Hi, this is who I am. I am Bill Malega, da 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 da. Looking forward to working with your students. If you need to contact me, here it is. Um, you can do it via email, one of those blast out things. Um, you could, you know, photocopy it and mail it home. We had a couple teachers a couple years ago, two great guys in English. One wrote a letter and mailed it home to every um, parent. The other one took, took him a while, but he made a telephone call to every parent of a child he was teaching. Hi, this is who I am. This is what I'm going to do. I see that I'm teaching, you know, your child. Just wanted to let you know I'm here. And it was incredible. Now, it took time and it took a lot of work. But I'm like, man, that was a really good idea. It doesn't have to be anything that drastic. Just let them know who you are, what your expectations are, and that you're there to help their um, child. And parents are going to love it. When you get into the classroom, you need to be confident, all right? I see young teachers all the time, kind of, oh, 
God, this is my first day. I'm brand new. I'm so nervous. There's so many of you. Um, or you have teachers who aren't really familiar with their you know, um, content and a student asks a question and they try and buffalo their way through it. It's okay to say, hey, you know, I'm not really sure about that great question. Let's do some research and find out. Worst thing you could do, though, is say that I'm nervous. Ah, no, you are confident. You are the master and the commander of that ship. This is your world. You are in charge. You are the unquestioned leader. Don't show any sign of weakness. For students, it's like a shark smelling blood, all right? They'll smell fear. They'll smell blood in the water, and you lose credibility. Students come in expecting you to know a little more. So you do. You're confident. You have a plan. Worst thing you could do is come walking in the door along with the students, papers falling out of your bag, and going, um, today uh, I think we're going to do... No, you know what you're going to do from the time the students walk in the door. You're professional and you are ready. Everybody has bad days. But for the most part, if you're consistent and you're confident, even on one of those bad days where you're not feeling very well or, you know, it's been raining for like three weeks or, or whatever, things are going to flow. When you have a substitute, people know the expectations. Confident. You are in charge. And if you don't know, if you're just a page ahead of your kids in content, fake it till you make it. Don't lie. Don't make stuff up. But you act confident like you know that material. It takes a couple of years to really understand your content and be confident with it. That's why you have to work all the time. You know, the old saying, a little bit of preparation um, early will save um, perspiration later. So we're doing all that. We're working. We're involved in our school. We have our plan. We got our room set up. We've talked to our parents. We're teaching our kids. We're a page ahead of the content. We force ourselves to be, you know, confident. We're master and commander. And then it's time to go home. And you get keyed up. And then, you know, you're thinking about what you have to do. So you wake up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and you just lay there. Those are signs of trouble. You need to learn to relax when necessary. When the day is over, we all know that we've got to take stuff home. Find a way to decompress. Find a way to relax. Get a hobby. Watch something on Netflix. Take your dog for a walk. Go for a jog. It's great to come and see students' activities, to go to the football game or go to the band or orchestra concert, go to the dance recital. It's good to be involved and, and have our students see us in the school community, but you also need to do some things for yourself, all right? Go to a movie, go out to eat. Some days you go home and just do nothing. Be with your families, relax, take a nap, get a hot cup of tea and just sit there in your, in your jammies and veg out. You've got to find a way to maintain a work-life balance. Education, being a teacher like any job, can have a way of consuming you, of being you know, all important, always there. There's always something to do, but you've got to know when to say, you know what, it's time to stop and take a little me time. You've got to refresh and recharge those batteries so you're there for your students. So that's just a quick little four-slide, um, you know, uh, survival guide to get you started off throughout the year. If you guys have any questions, again, I'm Bill Malega, M-E-L-E-G-A, at Chapel Hill High School. Feel free to drop me an email or, you know, uh, you know quick phone call, and uh, we'll help you out. Have a great year. Have a successful year, um, everyone. These ideas may not work for everybody, but probably some of them will. So, um, you know, good luck, and let me know if you guys need anything. All right, we'll see you guys.